We need to talk home prices. We need to talk pending home sales. We need to talk sellers changing their minds at record numbers. We need to talk about New York City coming after Airbnb. Going to be some pain there, I'm afraid. We need to talk about 2023 being a buyer's or seller's market. And what do I think there? And then finally, we are going to try, we are going to attempt to do a 9 a.m. live stream with the three amigos as a thank you to all of you amazing followers of One Rental at a Time, Dion Talk, and Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord. So we are going to attempt to do that again at 9 o'clock this morning. It would be Wednesday, the 28th of December. We all hope to see you there again, 9 a.m. Pacific. So let's get into it. Yesterday, we had two detailed uh, home value, home prices reports, one from Kay Schiller, one from FHFA. Again, these are reports that are a little bit long in the tooth, right? These are reports that we are looking at in late December about October data. That said, it, they still give us, I don't know, interesting information, certainly stuff to be talked about. One thing that I did note is in case Schiller's 20 uh, metro markets or 20 city report, San Francisco, San Francisco came in with the biggest drop of 11% year on year. Frankly, folks, I do not hear anything good coming out of San Francisco, right? We have talked about San Francisco's office space being a paltry 37% occupied. We have seen uh, class A office buildings perhaps going back to the bank. There is some significant debt in that market that is in trouble. We obviously started with San Francisco coming after tech, and now they are getting what they wish for. So again, tech has left. They have moved out. Uh, again, if you don't know what I'm referring to, San Francisco instituted a 1% tax on companies whose CEOs made some arbitrary number more than the average employee, which impacted tech stocks a lot because of RSUs and options and things of that nature. Yeah, that was probably not a good idea. Anyway, San Francisco is in a lot of pain, uh, obviously residential. We've talked about the condo markets. It uh, It is getting what it deserves, frankly, uh, from the leadership in San Francisco. Next up, we've got Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, and the one and only Brian Lebo shared a lot of this data with this channel earlier, so shout out Brian. He's an amazing follow on YouTube. Las Vegas came in with the highest month-on-month -month decline at 1.3%. Again, San Francisco is 11% year-on-year. Vegas is one negative 1.3% 1 month on month. If we step back and we look at FHFA, it's kind of a different story. And we really highlighted it th this last month. Remember for the month of September, FHFA did not come in negative. It did not. It came in slightly positive, it came in at 0.1% positive, right? The case shiller was negative. I don't know. I want to say one and a half percent. FHFA was positive. Uh, Case Shiller again was negative this month, but FHFA was flat, right? Uh, we talked about this last month. FHFA is a more complete uh, coverage of the country. Uh, Case Shiller is obviously very big city dependent, a little bit East Coast, West Coast. Uh, so again, it's uh, the data is very, very skewed. FHFA is more of a national number. So if you look at FHFA from a national perspective, the last two months, up. 0.1%. Nothing uh, to write home about, but it is very interesting to look at. Again, FHFA on a year-over-year -year basis, folks, drum roll, please. We are up 9.8% year-on-year, so uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, biggest up, right? We talked about San Francisco being down 11%. Miami. Miami takes home the victory uh, for highest year-on-year -year appreciation at a whopping 21%. Yes, folks, 21%. Uh, we did get some pending home data today, uh, pending home sales for last month. Uh, I did record a specific video on it that will go live, I think, today at 8.30 this morning. Uh, we actually pulled up the National Association of Realtors uh, report, uh, and we went through that in detail. Net-net, 
is it disappointed. Pending home sales down 4% month on month. Expectations were down half a percent. Uh, pending home sales were down 37.8% year on year. These are what bottomings look like. Again, I think my, my feelings should be known. I do believe we are in the bottoming process of just these horrible real estate statistics. Again, even when rates were 20%, we didn't go to zero. So to think we are going to go to zero here is, uh, is unlikely. The one thing we have to talk about pending home sales, again, being down 37.8% or 4% month on month, I want to ask each and every one of you, I'd love, I'd love some help here. And some of you have already started to help. The big question I have is we already know that active listings are down. Active listings are down 2%. Okay, great. However, I think there's some dirty data in those numbers. For example, if you have a, a listing in your market that is 60 days old, has had zero price drops, I believe that is a bogus fake listing. What do I mean by that? Well, I believe there are some sellers that say something like, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Real Estate Agent, if, if you can get my number, I will sell. We all know that selling in the winter right around Christmas and New Year's is not very easy. We all know that a lot of sellers have put April, May, or June pricing on their listings, and they're not going to sell. So I ask you this question. Let's assume there are 100,000 listings. And we find out that 20% are bogus listings. All the reports are going to say 100,000, but you and I are going to know, you know what? We actually have 80,000 real listings. Because having a listing but not having a realistic price, it's kind of a different story, right? So uh, we will see over the next 30 to 90 days a lot of expired listings. You will hear me talk to Omar and Beth about expireds. I think we are going to see those shoot up quite uh, heavily. How about sellers changing their mind? Once again, shout out Rick Policios Jr. from John Burns Real Estate Consulting, a wonderful follow on Twitter. If you follow him on Twitter, send him a note. Tell him you came from one rental at a time. I would appreciate it. Rick, you're welcome back on the channel anytime you would like. Hope to talk to you in the new year. Rick put out a series of tweets yesterday that is awesome. He talked about sellers switching their listing from for sale to for rent. Think about that, right? You and I have talked about that coming. We've pontificated about how bad or not bad it will be. Well, Rick has given us the data. July of 2022, that's the baseline. July of 2022, the national average for sellers taking their property off the for sale and putting it on the for rent was 4%. Fast forward to November of 2022, Rick is now calculating that 9%. 9%. So that's more than a double, right? If 40 people were doing it, now 90 people are doing it. So again, we are seeing more and more single family homes for sale becoming homes for rent. Now let's break down a couple of areas, right? Those were national averages. The Southwest, Again, the baseline is July, 7%. Now, 17%. That's almost one in five. Think about that. Almost one in five listings in the Southwest, which has to be what? Phoenix, Vegas, LA, I'm guessing. Went from 7 to 17%. How about Florida? Florida, again, the baseline is July of 2022 at 4%, now 15%. Folks, that's almost a 400% increase. 400%, almost 400%. Now for the coup de grace. This one is almost unbelievable for me, and we got to talk to the lumberjack about this one because it's wild. Well, actually, no, sorry, not Northeast. This is Northwest. So this would be Dion. Sorry about that. Not, not the Lumberjack. This is going to be Dion, probably Beth as well. The Northwest, which, what, Portland, Seattle, things like that. 
in July of 2022, 1% of sellers took their homes off the market and moved to uh, for rent. Fast forward to November of 2022. <laughs> this is unbelievable. 14%. Folks, that is a 1,400% increase. So one of the things that you and I have talked about is rents, right? I have said that rents and apartments will come down 5%. In fact, it's one of my predictions for 2023. This is why I call single family homes zero. Uh, if you would have asked me probably three, four, five months ago, I would have told you single family rents would go up. I now do not believe that. I'm now calling it flat. It is because things like the Northwest. I was going to sell. Now I'm going to rent. It's up 1,400%. That is wild, wild to think about. So again, I don't know that it's enough quantity to make rents come down. Certainly could. Uh, but as of right now, I haven't changed my opinion. My 2023 prediction for single families is 0% rent growth. Pretty uh, interesting to think about. How about New York City and Airbnb? New York City. Uh they're going after Airbnb hard in 2023. Their mayor has come out and said there are 10,000 illegal Airbnbs listed in New York City. Every illegal Airbnb takes a unit away from a quote unquote real New Yorker. I couldn't agree more. You've heard me talk about this, right? Airbnb has um, distorted markets. It has taken affordable units and turned them into vacation short-term rentals, which is making the vacancy uh, issues drop, and it's making harder for renters to move in. So again, I think uh, Airbnb, a lot of big cities, I think Airbnb is going to see a lot of attention uh, the next year, and New York City might be leading the race. Now let's talk about the housing market in general. In 2023, will it be a buyer's or seller's market? First and foremost, when you hear me talk about housing, realize I am talking about national and none of you, I will repeat, none of you operate at the national level. So please understand your buy box, your area, your location, right? Put that all in context. But when I think about the national market being a buyer's or seller's market, I think there's a pretty clear delineation. I think it will be a buyer's market for most of it. What do I mean by that? I think if you are in the luxury market, if you happen to be one of those individuals shopping for a luxury home, it will be a buyer's market. I think if you are shopping for a move up home and you have some liquidity event where maybe you're not interest rate sensitive or whatnot, it will be a buyer's market. I think if you are looking for a second or vacation home, it will be a buyer's market. Where will it be a seller's market? I think what we're going to see certainly in the first half of 2023 is FHA and VA buyers continue to step in to quality first-time homes. So again, I think a seller's market will be for the few of you that have ready-to-go single-family homes for the first-time home buyer. If you follow my channel, you know I have two projects currently going on that would qualify for that, and we are documenting the process. One of them is listed right now. We will keep it listed probably another week. If it doesn't sell, we will take it off the market and do phase two. The second project has really just started. We just did a ugly walkthrough yesterday or the day before. All videos on the channel. We will keep you updated. We will talk numbers. If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. We will document the process. But this is why I am focused on that one market. I am taking ugly properties, spending $30,000, $60,000, turning them into quality first-time rentals. And you will watch that process all year. Lastly, again, remember something else we're going to do today at 9 a.m. or in about an hour and 15 minutes, we're going to do, hope, hopefully, fingers crossed that technology doesn't disappoint. We are going to do a live stream with the three amigos where we will take your questions uh, and we will go for 60 minutes. So last thing to talk about, I wonder, is 
core inflation, core inflation at the end of 2023. So one year from today, 12 months from today, will core inflation have a three on it? Right today, if a memory serves, the last reading of CPI core was 6.1. I think core PCE was 4.6, I think. Is that right? I think so. In the end, I do think we're going to see inflation fall in 2023. Again, I think head, I think inflation has three components. The stuff, which is rolling off right now, which will be done in Q1. Housing, which I think will be done in Q3. And then it's the hard stuff, wages, services, things of that nature. But yes, I do think we end the year, if you were going to look at headline CPI, I think it probably has a four on it, probably a high four. Fingers crossed it's low fours. Core, it might have a three on it. So at the end of the day, folks, remember what we're trying to do on this channel. We are trying to inspire others to do the work. We want to congratulate Paula. Paula, congratulations for getting your third deal, if memory serves. I want to congratulate you. Your card will go in the mail. Remember, folks, we also have these golden tickets. Golden tickets are for someone who gets your first deal. These cards are for folks that get your second through whatever you would like. If one rental at a time helps you in any way, just send me a note on Instagram or right off my website. Give me your address and I will mail you one of these. These two cards are my number one goals for the year. I want to send out a thousand black cards and a hundred uh, gold cards. And then finally, Matt, you came to my meetup in uh, Fresno uh, earlier in the month. I tried to mail you some books. Apparently the mail system let us down. Matt, I am sending you your book again. It will probably go in the mail tomorrow, probably, uh, but your books are coming. Uh, thank you for all of your support. So folks, take care, like, subscribe, comment, become part of the channel one rental at a time where we do the work. We look forward to take advantage of the recession and we only do great deals. Bye.